welcome to the March vlog. Um, I'm sitting on the opposite side. I don't know why. Oh, there's Spleen. Hi, Spleen. Being all cute over there. That's why I'm sitting over here. Um, here's hoping March is a better reading month for me than February. I read 10 books in February, but only three of those were from my physical TBR, which is like most of what I care about when I'm talking about how much I'm reading. Like it, it's not the quantity or the number at the end of the month. It's like I want to prioritize reading from my shelves. So like I read 10 books last month, but only three of them were from my physical TBR, which I'm disappointed with. If I read eight books and all eight are from my physical TBR, I'm thrilled with that, <laughs> you know? So it's like I'm hoping this month I read more from my physical TBR, but I've already finished one, so we're off to a better start. Splain, you're so cute, but I have to hold up my book and I don't want to, like, block you. There we go. Um, <laughs> The Baker's Daughter by Sarah McCoy, which I put on my Backless Books TBR. I was like, it's short. I think I can get through it fast. <laughs> let's just, let's just do it. So it, it did feel like kind of an accomplishment reading this, but I didn't love it. Um, basically, it's historical fiction and contemporary about World War II, um, where it kind of ties together plot lines of like a young woman, a teen in Germany, kind of growing up at the end of the war and like her dealing with various things. And then present day, it talks a lot about like, well, it tries, <laughs> um, immigration from Mexico and one of the characters is like a border patrol agent and it's kind of like comparing the two like drawing similar themes but it just like entirely failed to have any discussion about immigration or really even nazism and like it was like it was doing the bare minimum um didn't love it and like the present day timeline like the main character was so annoying and like absolutely insufferable um so yeah didn't didn't love this but like at least it's off of my tbr and i've made the first step of that backlist tbr so i feel good about that and one book done this month i don't know what i'm reading next help me decide what i'm reading next spleen 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 it's her midday nap she doesn't want to get up and help me decide um i'm not blocking you spleen um, what am I reading next? Let's read this. I'm not reading ebooks at work anymore. Well, I shouldn't say that. I am. Uh, I'm not reading like thrillers at work anymore. Because when I worked at Kroger, I did not care about that job. So I would just read for my entire shifts towards the end because I was just done. Um, but I kind of stopped doing that because I. I don't do that at my current job because I actually do the job. Um, but I do still have an ebook that I read sometimes because sometimes I get like anxious and I found the like reading for a couple minutes helps with that a lot so I found that short story collections are very lovely to read because you spend like you know a 10 to 20 page story you can read in a couple of minutes and then it's like well I no longer feel anxious and I can like do my job so that has been a very useful discovery but again I'm not reading thrillers I'm reading like a historical fiction collection now that's YA which is Lovely. Mostly forgettable, but some of them are lovely. And my phone died. And Spleen left. Um, <laughs> I don't know at what point it died. Um, Chaos by Patricia Cornwell. That's what I'm going to read next. Because this was for my, um, I'm doing a second chance author's vlog that I started at the beginning of January. And then I kind of put off because like, I wanted to read Patricia Cornwell for that vlog. And this is a HarperCollins book. So I was just like waiting for the strike to be over so I could read it because I wasn't reading Harper Collins books because of the strike for a good portion of this year. But I did not like the first, this is the K, what's her name? Scarpetta, the K Scarpetta series. Um, and I really didn't like the first one that I read. Like it wasn't the worst thing I've ever read, but it was just annoying and unpleasant and kind of racist at the end. So I, this is, much later. I think she published this like in 2015 or 16 or something like that. So if I like this, I might go back and read some the later books of the series in order. But I figure if I don't like this, then I'm just gonna call it quits on the series. But it's set in Richmond, Virginia, which is where I'm from, 
which is why I really want to like this. So here's hoping and hopefully it'll be a quick read too because I don't know I'm trying to aim for like more quick reads this month because I just I got stuck in Owen Meanie so bad last month and it was just so unpleasant that like I I don't want to do that again. I don't even remember what I was supposed to have been reading but I'm no longer reading it. Um so I was worried for the past like month let's say like middle of March too. No, middle of February till now, which is like March 8th, I think. Um, I've been having bad reading streak, like between physical books, audiobooks, like whatever I pick up, I'm just not really enjoying. So I was kind of worried that was just because of my mood. Because like I did just start a new job and it's like I'm extra stressed, I'm extra tired, like it makes sense. So I was at the same time kind of avoiding picking up things that I thought I'd love because I didn't want to like ruin them because of being in a bad mood or whatever. Um, and I just started this because it's due at the library really soon. Um, I have Lungs by Sarah Murata. She wrote a convenience store woman, which I loved um, a few years back. It was wonderful. Um, so I started this. This is amazing. It was not my mood. I was just reading trash books. So I'm going to try to pick up some good things now because this is wonderful and so heartbreaking and just oh, I love the way she writes and I love the way she captures people and it's just like utterly absorbing. Anyway, I'm demolishing this book. <laughs> I'm like halfway done. It's wonderful. I highly recommend. Um, perfect for me. I also finished my audiobook, which I didn't enjoy, so I'm not even going to bother talking about it. Like, it's not worth the breath. But I started Say Nothing by Patrick Ryden Keefe, which is uh, about something in Ireland. Murder, I think. Um, maybe IRA related. I am just started it. Like, I'm 15 minutes in. Um, but I'm hoping to love it because one of his books was on my favorites list last year. Um, Empire of Pain, about the Sackler family and Purdue Pharma. So I'm hoping that Say Nothing is just as wonderful. And also I've wanted to read it for a really long time and I didn't realize it, but it's written by the same person. So I got it from the library and now I'm listening to it. And I really hope it's wonderful. I have finally had a five star read. I <laughs> love this so much. I just, had such an enjoyable time reading it and it was so nice and I was going to film a review on it because I haven't done any March reviews yet and we're like I want to say it's like the 11th of March maybe something like that so I was like this will be my first review because it's a five star book and I want to talk about how wonderful it is and I don't really know how to talk about all the things that have happened in this. <laughs> I just I don't know how to talk about like cannibalism and like extreme gore and a whole bunch of incest like this book went places like absolutely wonderful I had a fantastic time but like this cover looks so cute and fun and whimsical and like oh there was there was a lot of like really graphic cannibalism in this like I love it though. I love Sayaka Camarada. Um, this is my second of her books and they're both five stars and it's just like this is so wonderful. I love the commentary and then she just kind of took a turn at a point and it was like oh like I get why you're doing this and it works so wonderfully in the story and it's so disgusting and horrifying in all of, like it's in intentional ways and like I just oh. <laughs> it was a lot like it was a lot so <laughs> I don't know how much I would recommend this book to most people but like it was truly wonderful if you're okay with a little bit of that and with like you're very much about social commentary type book like I don't know um it was great though I will probably be reading books for projects for a minute because I have a few ongoing projects right now um reading my second chance books so I've only done two of the five and I still have to do my um my book for the 12 book challenge this month where I read books that were recommended to me so I gotta find one of those 
to read this month because I don't think I'll get anything from the library in time which I was kind of hoping for before the coffee gets cold but I think it's gonna be another like week or two so I don't want to count on that in case it's kind of a slower read um but I do really want to read Last Call by Warren Adler. I held this late last year and like it's short which like I'm vibing right now because I am reading very slowly so it's like kind of nicer to get involved in like short things that I can finish fairly quickly. So it's about an old man who starts dating this woman after his wife died and then he finds out that this woman still has a husband who's alive and has Alzheimer's and it's like kind of just like a complex bittersweet sad thing um I don't know I feel like I want to love this like I I'm trying to like pick up a few books that I know I'll like really well not that I'll, I know I'll enjoy because like I've heard nothing about this this might be horrible but like just pick up some books that like I feel like I have a good chance of loving and like I just look at this and I read the description and I'm like that sounds heartbreakingly beautiful I want to read it so I'm gonna read it and Hopefully it's good, but like, I don't know. This just sounds like the ultimate book for me. Like he's, this man is 83. His wife, he was married to his wife for more than 50 years and she passed away and then he meets a woman and like they have kind of a nice like late in life relationship and like then she has a husband with Alzheimer's and that's very complicated and it's like, is this, is what we're doing wrong? Like, oh, I don't know. It's, I'm really excited to read this, so. Hopefully it's as wonderful as I want it to be. It is Saturday, I think the 18th, and I have been reading, but I finished nothing, which does not make me feel really great about myself. Um, I'd wanted to finish at least three books off my shelf by the 15th, and I still only finished one, but I'm very close to the end of both of the books that I'm reading. Like, could finish them both today if I felt like it which I may or may not. Um, it depends on how much time I spend doing booktube because I haven't done anything on booktube in like two weeks. Um, I haven't watched anything. I didn't post any videos last week. Spleen! Which I don't love, but I don't know. I just wasn't like, I don't know. I don't really have a good reason. Like I was busy, but not more busy than usual. I just didn't feel like it. So I didn't, which means I really have to this week. Um, but I have been mostly reading Last Call, which oh, is such a disappointment. It's such a disappointment. Like, I had such high expectations for this. It sounded so wonderful, and it's not... Um, it's just not great. It's... Ugh, I don't like the writing. I don't like the characters. I don't like anything that's happening. I don't think it's well handled. Um, basically, this is about an elderly man who is a widower, and then... He meets an elderly woman and they fall in love but then he finds out that her husband is actually still alive and has alzheimer's which like creates like this whole thing which sounds really wonderful and it's also a lot about anti-semitism kind of <laughs> it tries to be whether it succeeds is another story and warren adler is jewish so like or at least he was raised jewish um yeah so that's what this is about but it's just like the romance is super insta lovey. Like, there was no relationship built between these people. Like, they just happened to be at the same dog park with their two standard poodles and met. And then, like, three days later, after, like, only talking at the dog park, they were like, oh, yeah, but I'm in love with you. And, like, I was like, you've had, like, no real conversations. Like, I get that you're into each other, but, like, there's been no relationship built. And the way her husband with Alzheimer's is handled is not great. Like, there's no discussion on it. It's kind of just, like, he's keeping them apart. It's not, like, really an emotional thing that, like, they're both struggling with. It's just, like, she's sad that her husband has Alzheimer's, but also she's really horny for this other guy. Which is basically how it's written. And the other dude is just like, you should put him in a home so we can, like, move in together and get married. <laughs> and it's just, like, weirdly done. Like, I thought it was going to be, like, this really bittersweet thing, and it's, like, kind of porny. Which, I'm not saying that just because the sex is graphic, which it is. I don't love that, but, like, whatever. I can get past that. It's, like, the way that it's written makes it kind of porny. Like, it doesn't feel real. Like, it feels like 
a fantasy of like the dude writing this of just like he's super into it writing out what he wishes his life were right now because he was elderly when he wrote this i think this might have been his last book because i think he died like a year or two after publishing this i think um but it's just like weirdly written and not great and it needs to be edited <laughs> like this is self-published i'm pretty sure and it's just like there are points that just like desperately need to be edited and need more revisions because it'll be like a character's like standing up and having a conversation while they're standing and then like two sentences later it'll be like oh well this person stood up in the middle of the conversation it's like they were already standing you know and that happens a lot and it's just like kind of frustrating and annoying and it's just like there is so much room for like depth of emotion and like discussion of the issues here and there's just it doesn't have a whole lot and I'm just disappointed um and then I don't like the Patricia Cornwall book I don't think I'm a fan of her I don't think I'll be reading any more of her books which is fine um I do think that one was probably based on the way it's written I think it was probably a particularly bad one but it's fine <laughs> it's fine um I'll finish it and then hopefully read something better because these are I really thought I was gonna love this like it's not terrible like I've read worse it's like I'm probably gonna give it two stars though um <laughs> But just like my biggest issue is just that I wanted to love it so much. Like it sounded so wonderful and it's just like not like you know that joke when people like are complaining about litfic and they're always like the old white professor who's like teaching English and or literature or whatever and like has an affair with his student. Like this is not literally that, but it vibes like that. And I suddenly understand the critiques based in that. I hadn't read any books like that no I'm like I understand like this is not literally that but it had like has the same vibes so I don't know but I'm gonna finish it and then probably unhaul it which makes me sad because I did I really thought I was gonna love this but it's fine my actual frustration with this book is through the roof I finished it one star um I wasn't enjoying it I already mentioned that like the writing the characters the things that were happening, not great, but I was planning to give it, like, a two-star, like, wouldn't recommend, not the worst thing I've read. Um, hmm. <laughs> and then, this dude went on an anti-Semitic and sexist rant at her, which included calling her multiple slurs, um, because she didn't pick up the phone. And, yeah, that was lovely and unnecessary. And just, like, this is supposed to be a redeemable character and it's like he literally went on a sexist and anti-semitic rant with slurs like multiple and said really awful things that included a lot of you people are all like this and you know like i'm not exaggerating the things he said like i wouldn't wish to repeat them um and it's just like he's supposed to be redeemable and they like this is a romance like they end up together and it's like no like she deserves so much better than this dude um this would have gotten two stars had he died sad and alone because i didn't really enjoy the writing i didn't like the characters i didn't like anything about it but like that really took it down to like the one star like this book is irredeemable i'm really glad the author is not around because i would feel very uncomfortable being like the only review for this book on goodreads or not on goodreads on storygraph it's got like four other reviews on Goodreads or something, four or five, that are all very positive, like four or five stars. I'm just like, did we miss like the slurs? Like he literally called her slurs because she didn't pick up the phone. And like, there are reasons and backstories to these things, which are not really important. Like, I don't care how hard his life is. I don't care what her reasons were for not answering the phone. Like she didn't pick up the phone for about 12 hours so he was just anti-semitic at her like that's you know and then it was never like confronted like yes it's anti-semitic but he apologizes so it's fine and he has no idea where it came from and i'm like are we not like including all the anti-semitic things you've said and done throughout like this entire book like you don't know where it came from like i just Oh, it was horrifying. Um, wouldn't recommend. This is by far the worst thing I've read this year, which is unfortunate or weird, I guess. 
that it comes after the best thing that I've read this year, which was Earthlings, which was wonderful. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't recommend this. Um, yeah, that was unfortunate. I'm gonna read Kindred by Octavia Butler, which I have. Um, this is what I'm going to read next. I'm still working on the Patricia Cornwell book. I'm almost done. I'm gonna finish it tonight, probably. But I'm gonna take this to work tomorrow and read this because I have really been wanting to read it because like the show is either coming out or recently came out, which I'm not gonna watch. Like I just don't care. Um, <laughs> but with that, everyone's been talking about it a lot and it's just like reminded me like how much I want to read this book and it's been like on my list for a while and I haven't read much sci-fi this year so I would like to read a little more and hopefully I love it. Um, hopefully it's significantly better than Last Call. Like that's... <laughs> that's where my bar is now if it's better than that then i'll be happy and like it can't possibly be worse than that i apologize for the more terrible than usual lighting um it's late i'm about to go to bed but i haven't updated in a minute i actually took like two weeks off from youtube um it's thursday the 23rd perhaps or something close to that um i don't know i took two weeks off YouTube. Um, I'm definitely gonna have a video up Monday, which, like, will do. <laughs> I don't know why I was missing. I just, like, was not doing anything productive in my time off of work, which is fine. Um, life goes on. I have been reading. I've been making really good progress on Kindred this week. I'm almost done. I'm gonna finish it before I go to bed, which gotta be soon because I'm tired. I only have like 40 pages left. It's really good. Like I love the story. I love the characters. It's like very very interesting and compelling but I don't love her writing style. It's like really dialogue heavy and just like kind of like minimal. Like I feel like the story needed more. You know just like more fleshing out of like the characters experiences kind of. Because, like, the story itself, I really like. Like, the plot, I think, is wonderful. It's just, like, the characters, like, reflections or, like, feelings or, like, I don't know how to describe it. I feel like it just needed a little bit more fleshing out in that regard. But I love it. Like, it's going to be four stars unless the ending is, like, terrible. <laughs> really good. And then after I finished that, I did get two books from the library that I'd had on hold for months. Um, Legends and Lattes, which I had on hold for months, and then before the coffee gets cold, again, had on hold for months. <laughs> um, so, both of these still have a bunch of holds on them, so I'm going to have to read them within the next three weeks, or wait another, like, three months to get them, because they're both for my 12 books project, and yeah, it's kind of unfortunate they literally came in on the same day. Um... But that's okay. That's okay. Uh, so I'm just going to be reading both of them for the next... I'm hoping, like, week and a half. Like, if I can get them both done this month, that would be amazing. Um, but yeah. I'm going to start with Before the Coffee Gets Cold, just because this is the one I'm more hyped for. Um, I'm very nervous about my feelings towards Legends and Lattes. Um, but this I feel like I'm going to love, based on the way people describe it. So... The only thing that kind of is like making me feel a little iffy here is that it's a time travel book and Kindred is a time travel book and I'm not really a time travel reader. Um, so it's just a little bit weird to read two like back to back because it's not something that like I ever really read. So it's just a little bit like odd. Uh, but I just I, I just don't feel like picking up Legends and Lattes quite yet. Um, I probably won't talk about these much in this vlog because I'm doing a specific vlog for the 12 books project that will probably be in two parts but these will be my next two books for that so yeah I'm hoping I love them both but this one I really have super high expectations for. It is Saturday the 25th and the month is almost over. Um I don't know how much I've updated this vlog. I'm thinking not much. Um I'm reading this right now and by reading it I mean I'm about to start it because I would like to have this done by the end of the month because otherwise I have to return it to the library soon in like two weeks. So if I don't finish it by the end of the month, then I have to edit the cover photo into my wrap up, 
which is a mild annoyance that I like avoiding. <laughs> I would rather just read it faster and not do that. So that's my plan for this weekend or today, I guess. It's like less than 300 pages, so maybe I can just like zoom through it real quick. That's my hope. I did the map on my TBR shelves because my goal for this year, one of my goals, I've been like trying to like think about all my goals and like keep them in mind as I'm reading so that I don't just think about them in October and realize, oh no, this is impossible now. Um, one of them was to get down to 550 books on my TBR. Um, I have to read six books a month off my shelves in order to do that and only buy two, which is doable but hard and that's concerning to me. I feel like I'm not going to get to 550. Um, not if I read anything long, that's for sure. Um, if I have a month where I read a bunch of short things, but I don't want to like read short things just for the sake of reading short things because I don't like that. And I have been reading slower lately and not getting to six books. Like last month I read three books off my shelves and so far this month I've read four. But I don't think I'm going to get another one off my shelves because I'm reading this, which is very obviously, well I shouldn't say very obviously, it's a library book. I have ex library copies on my shelves so it's hard to tell. Um, but yes, this is a library book. So, and the last book I read was a library book. So it's just like... I don't know if this is possible, but like, I still really want to hit that 550 because like, if it's not going down, then I have a problem and it hasn't been going down for a long time. I have too many books on my shelves that I haven't read. I just need to read more of them and buy less. I have bought too many books so far this year. It was my goal to not buy many and, and then I did badly about it. <laughs> Basically, I had to buy work clothes and I was buying them used because like I am not spending like $60 a pair for cheap bad work pants. <laughs> like that's not happening. So I went to like thrift stores and bought stuff there. But it's just like stressful and not fun for me. So I was like every time I go to a thrift store and buy functional work clothes, I can buy myself a book. Which was the motivation that I needed. <laughs> But I did wind up buying myself a few books, which I was trying not to do, but it's fine. Um, I just need to read them and read other books on my shelves and read more and do booktube because I just took a two week break from booktube for literally no reason. Um, haven't watched, haven't responded to comments, haven't uploaded a video. So I gotta change that this weekend because like I for sure, if I don't come back this week, then I'm not going to come back for like two years. And I don't want that because booktube is like my single fun hobby that I do. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna post something. I'm gonna go back to my two video a week schedule and then try to just keep up with that and keep reading more. I started posting on Instagram, my Instagram stories, just like my page counts for the day because it, I, it's good motivation because it's like low-key embarrassing for me to just post that I read like, oh, 36 pages today. Oh, 32 pages today again and it's like like I don't think it's embarrassing to do that it's embarrassing for me because I read quickly and like I should be reading more than that and like it's not the amount that I would like to be reading so it's embarrassing to just constantly like keep posting what I view as a failure because it's not where I want to be and I could easily be where I want to be so I have actually started reading more this week because of that so that's been very helpful so I'm gonna keep doing that for a while and I'm going to read this and hopefully like it. Fingers crossed. <laughs> I figure it's probably about time to wrap up the vlog. Um, it's been a weird month. Mostly I've just been kind of lazy and I haven't done a whole lot. Which is fine. It's it's how it, it's how it goes sometimes. Um, when I'm feeling lazy and needing to do nothing, I prefer to let myself do that. Which I don't know if that's helpful or not, but it's what I do. Um, honestly, I'm mostly wrapping up the vlog because I need to post a video tomorrow, and I don't have anything to post, so I'm gonna post a vlog. That's. That's what's gonna happen, and then I'll figure out my videos for next week. Um, but also, like, 
I just started this for my second chance reading books video. Um, I I just started it and it's like 500 pages long, so I'm not gonna finish this by the end of the month. So it's like, why bother? Why bother vlogging when I'm not gonna be finishing anything? So I'm reading a thin dark line. So far it's pretty confusing and I don't really know what's going on and there are a lot of characters with kind of similar sounding names. Um, so I'm confused, but it's not bad yet. Um, <laughs> there's, there's always time for it to get worse. Um, so I'm reading that and I finished Legends and Lattes and I finished Before the Coffee Gets Cold, both of which were kind of more mediocre than I would have liked them to be. Like both very enjoyable reads, but just like less than what I wanted. So that was kind of disappointing, but like they were both good. It's like, you know, when a book is good, it's just like you wanted to love it and it was just good. Or you wanted to really love it and it was like a really enjoyable book but like you didn't love it um so yeah i feel like a lot of the books i read this month were either like high three stars or low four stars um i'm listening to braiding sweetgrass by robin walkimer um i'm listening to that right now because that was very hyped and i finally got the audiobook and it's very interesting um it's about ecology. She's an ecologist with a PhD, but she also talks a lot about her culture as an indigenous woman and like what it means to her and what kind of the earth means to her and like ecology things. And it's a little bit too meandering for my taste, but like still good, still good. Also, I cut my hair. Um, I don't know. I just like chopped it off like an hour or two ago because <laughs> I wasn't gonna cut off this much because I was really liking the long hair but like the ends were so fried and when I went to cut it I was like feeling where like the dried crunchy hair was and it was kind of like up to here so I was like let's just let's cut off all the dry crunchy hair so I did and now it's not super short but like I I was liking the long so I'm a little bit disappointed but it was it was too damaged uh also, I did just, I'm bad at cutting my hair, so I did just wind up, like, chopping and chopping and chopping to even it. So, like, I probably, had I been, like, a little bit more skilled, I probably could have had, like, an extra inch. But it's fine. Um, it's cute. It's short. It's, it's so weird and, like, flippy, and I can, like, move it, <laughs> which is weird. Um, but yeah, I feel like my reading has picked up from posting on Instagram because I started doing that just like in my stories every day posting my page count of how much I read and like that has worked fantastically because it does like make it feel like if I don't read then I have to tell everyone that I read six pages today and it's like when I could just sit down and read for 40 minutes and hit like close to 100 that sounds a whole lot better. So I just like have started doing that. Like, you know, not sitting down and reading for like four hours at a time, but like reading a little extra, it helps. Just like giving myself that like little bit of accountability. So yeah, um, this has been March. Um, I guess my, my wrap up will come out next week and I'll talk in depth about everything I read because I don't even know if I talked about everything I read in this vlog, I don't know what this vlog is. This could be like a 15 minute vlog or it might be just like a 50 minute vlog. <laughs> I feel like 15 minutes is probably closer. Um, but thank you for watching and sitting through this and continuing to watch my channel when I've watched no book two in like a month. I'm gonna fix that for April. <laughs> I will. Um, I'm gonna fix that for April and I'm gonna post more consistently and like do things. I don't know, I was just lazy. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna go read before I go to bed. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I will see y'all again soon.